Hello everyone. Today I wanted to show you on how to export DeForce hair simulations or just regular DeForce hair out of Des Studio and use them in other 3D software without a problem. Quick side note, I've just uploaded a new tutorial onto my Patreon, one that has been frequently requested for a really long time now, and that is on how to export animation out of Des Studio to Cinema 4D without any compromises. To export animation with DeForce hair simulation, with DeForce clothing simulation, with subdivision surfaces out of DAS, and you can easily just open them up inside Cinema 4D. Thank you for the support, and now continuing with the tutorial. DeForce is DAS own proprietary simulation software, I guess. So if I apply a DeForce labeled hair to my character, it'll end up looking like this. Now, that is not the case all the time, sometimes DeForce hair does come pre-rendered in your viewport and you can export it just fine. Um, I've always wondered, man, how do I get this out of DAS? Because DeForce usually forces you to use it inside DAS Studio. Um, but there's a way around it. And to do that, all you have to do is just make sure that it's also displaying in the viewport. So when you click on your hair, the one you just added to your scene at the top in the scene project settings, you can then go below here and just make sure that your hair is selected. We can stretch this out a bit so you can see what's being set all the way over there. And you wanna scroll down until you find settings like this. Now, preview PR hairs and viewport line tessellation sites. So, for the sake of this, I'm gonna just color this green and color this green as well. So, you know, those two are the important ones. It's preview PR hairs and viewport line tessellation sites. All DeForce hair should usually have those settings when you have them selected over here. And we want to tick on for our preview PR hairs. So it's gotten thicker now, but it's still not really showing up as hair. So when we increase the viewport tessellation, that'll change. It'll turn our hair into geometry. So for now, it's just splines, but as we increase the viewport tessellation, it'll turn into geometry. Now, considering that the final render tessellation is set to a three we can do just the same thing so let's hit it with a three and just wait a bit it calculates and now we have actual geometry showing up in our scene and now that you have generate pr hairs and preview pr hairs on with a viewport line tessellation of three you can easily just export this out of this like you normally would so as you can see i've pre-exported this right here and i'll just override this one the first file is set to viewport line tessellation of three and the second one is set to a viewport line tessellation of two and this one is our regular one set to three you can see that the file difference and the file size difference so i'll just override this and these are my obj settings usually and just save this. Now we jump into cinema and we want to see what's up. So we import for now. Let me just pause the viewport and we just import our file that we just exported. So we have our regular OBJ with a viewport tessellation of three. Now, it takes a while, as you can see, that was the biggest file of them all, considering the geometry for the hair is so dense. And there we go. So we have imported our level three tessellation model. And then I'll just show you the differences between two and one. So let's import two. And then we move this to the, oh, my bad. We move this to the side. This is a different hairstyle, I think. So don't get confused by this. 
but it's basically the same here. And then we import our one and hit it with a minus 20. And I'll just throw a camera in there with a bigger, with a bigger focal length. Just zoom out so we have a clearer side by side going on. So, as you can see, the one with the viewport tessellation set to one looks kind of wonky. So, what happens if we just view it in the live viewer? Okay, so it's just it doesn't exist, it seems like. All right, and that is because viewport tessellation one doesn't give you geometry options, it gives you splines. Splines disguised as geometry that just don't really show up because there is nothing there. So I just usually ignore the one tessellation. And there is a difference between one and uh, between two and three. That being, if we were to check our geometry for our. Just get rid of the one tessellation. So let's check our hair short object for the two tessellation that's 295,000 polygons for our upper hair short and that is 887,000 polygons so it's basically almost tripled um the size of the polygons which is unnecessary render power if you ask me because you could just, you know, you could zoom in and you can see a difference. You know, these are not all the way through most of the time, but the ones on the left are. So considering on what you're going for, I just suggest going with the um, lower line tessellation instead of maxing it out completely. You could always do another thing being at a cloth surface make them a bit thicker so instead of subdividing them which we don't want to do we can just make them thicker that is way too thick so we make them 0 0.01 like this maybe so like this you can make the hair thicker without increasing the subdivisions so it can look more dense but as you can see when you zoomed out it's not really that necessary and this is basically how you export DeForce hair out of the studio. It works with most hairstyles. Most DeForce hairstyles should have those preview PR hairs and line tessellation settings in the studio itself. In the respective settings to each object. And yeah. I hope you are now not as confused as to why your DeForce objects aren't showing up in a third party 3D software because you really want to get that good looking hair but you're not sure what the heck is going on. This is how you fix it. Super easy and quick. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for checking by. And I'll always check the comments for suggestions and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can if I do know the answer. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for supporting my Patreon. More content to come soon. And yeah, have a good one.